it's me again back in my beige void today I wanted to talk a little bit about self-care it seems like a buzzword in 2023 it seems like everyone is talking about it employers our family social media every podcast that I listen to at least uh, has addressed self-care so let's talk about it Speaking of self-care, I got a new kitten. His name is DJ Catnip. He's a wild, evil beast. And he makes it so I can't sleep eight hours a night. And he destroys everything I love. Uh, but when he cuddles with me and purrs, that feels like self-care, right? We're going to call it kitten self-care. The dictionary definition of self-care is taking actions to preserve or improve your health. But when we see it out in the world, the examples we usually see are getting eight hours of sleep, going for a walk, getting involved in a yoga practice, uh, taking a relaxing bath. When I hear self-care, what I hear is, hey, Tori, add one more thing to your to-do list. Add one more thing to your already full plate. But it's for you, so add it and don't complain. In preparation for this video, I googled self-care for lawyers or self-care for people in the legal industry and what I found on the internet was to disconnect from technology, eat a balanced diet, and learn to delegate. All of those things are true. All of those things take time and effort, and oftentimes it feels like time and effort are the two things that I don't have. So now that I've poo-pooed all over self-care, I want to issue a challenge. I don't have any problem at all with folks using self-care or a self-care practice for themselves. If going for that jog or drinking a green smoothie or getting a manicure makes your life easier, makes you happier, makes you a better person, great. All of that is lovely. My challenge is when we find ourselves in leadership roles, like leadership of an organization, leadership within a firm or a company, leadership between a mentor and a mentee. When we're in a position like that, where we have an op opportunity and obligation to speak to newer folks in our profession, younger attorneys, folks who have not been practicing for very long, and when we are setting expectations for them for self-care, I want to challenge us a little bit. Let's talk about self-care in terms of setting boundaries. Let's talk about self-care in terms of saying no. Let's talk about self-care in terms of setting your values and living by those values. Self-care when it comes to our employees, the members of our organizations or our mentees, we need to set them up to be successful and one of the ways that we do that is not by adding more to their plate. It's not about giving them one more to do. It's not about giving them a yoga mat and telling them that we hope they can find time for 30 minutes of light stretching. The way that we help the next generation of attorneys is by encouraging them to practice self-care through taking care of themselves. By saying no, setting boundaries and living by their values, they will have the best opportunity to avoid burnout, to be valuable members of our profession, and to enjoy the practice of law for years to come. Let's go out there and support each other. Let's stay positive and stay happy. I'm going to go find my self-care cat. Have a great day, all. Bye-bye.